All right, so let's hit it. <laughs> uh, this thing's still giving me a countdown. Let me set this off. Fine. Oh, yeah, we are back. Okay. So uh, yeah. Ah, fuck off. No, we should be back. We should be back. We should be back. Well, I hope they didn't get me swearing. <laughs> <laughs> You get demonetized instantly. Yep. I, I heard yep. that actually. Yes, I don't know. Yep. It goes all of my income for this one stream. Yeah, all, all twenty um, cents. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, so we're back. There's people joining again. Uh, I'm sorry about that, guys. If you can hit the like button again, that'd be lovely. Otherwise, we are just going to move forward. Lucas was talking about his uh, yeah. single focus solution made entirely for free and available for free that you can get on Thingiverse. Have Thingiverse, a website. yes. yes uh, I, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe we can just... Uh, there's a, I, I posted this link. And, and, yes, I, I don't know. I don't know where I was uh, when this broke down. You know, uh, I was uh, very anxious about this live stream thing and these kind of things, uh, this, this helps, you know? That, yesterday I was talking to a friend and I, I told her, yeah, I'm a bit nervous about this. And she was like, Lucas, if there's one thing you can do, it's talking, you know? So <laughs> I take this as a compliment. It's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, the focus, yeah. Still, this like, is, this um, is... You know, the coolest thing about this, actually, um, I, I made this thing and I printed it and I, I made a second copy for Tim Linson and we were both happy with it. And the quality of it is fair for what you pay and, uh, for it. But building it, you know, I, I, I'm totally honest with you. When I get on Thingiverse and I, f I see um, a manual with, uh, or a manual like that, which is so big and you need very many parts alongside of it i would not do it because i was uh i'm maybe i would but probably i wouldn't because it's very much work and it's also uh, very tedious and then there was this moment uh, where i was tagged on facebook by a guy i think his name is uh, joe joe frank or something mm -hmm. I, let's pretend he's, his name is joe and joe, joe. Uh, posted that uh he printed this thing actually and posted some screenshots from from uh, or some um, stills from from shots he, did, he, he took with it with a Sankor lens, I think. And they looked terrific, you know. And uh, I was really amazed not only by the looks of the footage, but also that he actually took his time to print this, manufacture it for himself, and uh, yeah, and do it simply, you know. And this is such a good feeling to see that people actually make this stuff that you do. And I think you, and I think you can understand. Who love free stuff? Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, people love free stuff, but I mean, it's it's not really free. You know, if you have a three D printer, of course, it's very easy to pull it off. But if you don't have a three D printer and have it be done somewhere else, um, this becomes not very pricey, but it's always a hurdle. Uh, yeah. And three D printing is is not very expensive to get into. I have a printer which costs. I don't know. I think less than $300, mm. 280 I think, or 260 I paid for it. It's very cheap, and the filament is not very expensive. And, um, so we talked in the first so part cool of the stream. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's, uh, it's cool what you can do with it. So we have the single focus solution. Um, just, I can plug it a bit, you know? I mean, I don't earn any money with this, so I can just, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, actually, there's, uh, if I... If I may be so free, there's on my Thingiverse page. You can tip the designer. You can tip me on PayPal. That's a good just, thing. That's a good thing. It's a I'm, consideration. The people there, I'm making. So just if least. you if you don't feel forced. Yes. Yeah. But um, uh, th this thing is just <laughs> like uh, the normal single focus solutions with uh, 75 millimeter threads. And there's uh, other clamping mechanisms yeah. to attach it on different ways. Uh, I found this to to be the best one for my setups, uh, for what it's worth. So yeah, the focus. Um, what's I'm, I'm working right? on two episodes about it. I'm going to yeah, make a this... video tutorial on how to assemble it and an episode that's actually reviewing it like I review their single focus solution. So that's going to yeah, be fun. This... 
Yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm very, actually, I'm very uh, looking forward to it. Because one thing where this thing really rocks, where I was confused by, was the focus distance. Because you can focus really, really, uh, I think it's like 60 or 70 centimeters, something like that, which is, without the diopter, pretty cool. And um, That's two feet for the Americans. <laughs> and if Tim Linson gifts you the glass, it's very cheap also. <laughs> but, but <laughs> I was able to track the glass, but yeah. Yeah, but people, you know, but, but, but people are uh, not happy with it because um, some people were not happy with it because the glass was uh, hard to source. Actually, uh, these days I'm in. Uh, we have uh, this very nice guy, Justin Bakel. I hope it's called mm, Bakel, or done. maybe it's he's, he's French, so maybe it's. Done. I sound only sound racist when I try it. So let's call him Justin. So for for uh, I hope this is at least right. And Justin is um, very cool on the lens designing side as well. So he's uh, I don't know I don't understand the stuff that he does. It it does, but it looks cool. And he had some plans for a very adopter uh, that he shared with with me and others. And uh, now I'm trying to find a cheap solution to make them let them made let them be made in China or something, to make maybe hopefully at some point uh, make a completely DIY uh, solution that is readily available. I mean the glass mm -hmm. won't be cheap, of course, then, but it's that it would be a cool solution, I think, if there's like a very um, because this is what I really love about this um, 3D printing community, especially. Which is also a reason I do these things for free, because there are so many great things and great great designs out there on Thingiverse or uh, my mini factory or uh, how they are all called these sites um, that share all these designs for free for absolutely free. Um, which I yeah. really I really respect that, and I kind of want to give something back also. So and then having like this Tinkera single focus solution. Um, would be really cool and as i, I get asked about, very often hmm? just still about the the focus uh i tried finding the screws here in canada and all the sizes are different and they're not readily available so i got lucas to send me a care package full of screws uh which is on the way apparently it's gonna I be hope, here soon yeah, <laughs> i think i hope so i mean that all this corona stuff is like uh, a real pain with with shipping stuff um yeah yeah this is the problem you do things in europe and then you have european parts what can you do um you, you sent me a few uh sizes and and stuff for um imperial parts and i actually want to try to make this clamp imperial also i don't know when i can find the way uh, the, the time to do it this only needs like three nuts but if you have to to buy them somewhere specific it's always a pain yeah. yeah, and I get finding asked these often little about the focus is, is it? Yeah, finding little but parts. What I get asked tough. often is, uh, is the is the the focus uh, how smooth it is? And of course, it's I don't want it. This is an FVD sixteen A, and this is a much smoother operation, definitely. As well as the hardcore DNA is a much smoother operation, but for ah, give me a second, uh, my friend Erica. In the previous stream, uh, ended. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, just so she can maybe watch. Uh, the... So uh, we got Tim Benson here um, on the stream, and he's uh, saying that the glass is called Fujinon WCV eighty two SC, but the JVC variant. Uh, you can look for that if you're looking for the glass part to harvest. But yeah, on. it's 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 fine. Tim Linson knows this from on top of his head. I can't, for the life of me, remember. Never the remember it. Uh, never, never. And I wrote it several times. But he is like, he's a doctor. He needs to to get all of this stuff in his brain, I guess. Yeah. But the focus operation is. I mean, you can probably hear it. Uh, yep. When I do it really fast, but it's uh, it's printed after all. But it's rather smooth. Um, it's not a FED 16A, but it's also quite a lot cheaper, I hope so, at least. I mean, 
I'm I'm very honest about it. If you can source the glass for it for like 300 bucks, I wouldn't drop too much into it. I would rather get an FED 16A. Mm. Um, this thing can accept a bit wider taking lenses and focus closer, but still the quality on the FED 16A is simply much better. Can you do, you know, but it's um, for what it's okay. worth. It was quite a cool done. project. You made it. Yeah, I think so. And it works quite well. Um, yeah. What can we talk about else? Uh, it's sometimes just little things, you know. Uh, I think I also sent you this model. This is the FMJ that I talked about earlier. Let me quickly get the different view here. So the FMJ from Rapido Technology. And uh, I think Jim now made a front beam for it um, that you can also buy from him by now. But uh, I think a few weeks back, you couldn't buy such a front foot. There was this tiny block with just a quarter inch uh, thread in there. Then you could get one of these uh, SLL, uh, uh, some small rig uh, clamps that are not produced anymore. So, um, and things like this, you have just a little foot printed. And this is, I mean, I could this break it probably. Break. If you try yeah, hard enough. <laughs> Yeah, if you, if you can break anything if you try hard enough, but it's um, it holding us pretty well. And this is the cool thing about this as well that the the uh, the, the most most force just comes from above. Uh, this is somewhat. I think I, I tested this with an FED thirty five A that I don't have here anymore. But the FED thirty five A, of course, gets you very very front heavy, but it still works in this setup. It still works. It's not perfect. And this is also only a printed clamp. I don't have that released yet on Thingiverse. I don't know if I should. Probably mm -hmm. I should when I release this one. <laughs> uh, maybe I should put it in the camera. Yeah, it's, it's always, I have this on my second screen here. I can see myself in very big glory, which is a bit confusing. <laughs> um, so this is also just a printed part. And uh, this is a printed part. And this, as I said, it's, uh, it's very stable. And um, Going anywhere. One thing I forgot to mention. One thing I forgot to mention. Uh, this is, uh, as you could see uh, on here, uh, this is printed in an hideous orange, uh, the inner ring here, but you get the idea. This one is, uh -huh. as you can see, um, not directly uh, flush with the main body of this clamp. And this is because uh, that the... Um, Stepper ring on the step taking ring has side. some room. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Do you have some room then? And then the only thing dividing the rear of the scope, because the rear of the scope is oh no, no I, uh, is flush with this inner ring. Uh, the only thing dividing the taking lens from the scope is the thickness um, of yeah the main body part of this part here of the of the stepper ring which uh -huh. I measured is around 1.4 millimeters. So this okay. is, of course, some distance, but it's, it's, it's a safe connection as I can. I, I don't get tired of this. It's uh, <laughs> because I was so amazed myself. You know, it, is, uh, it does work quite well. And yeah, what I, and this is the main thing, what I disliked about the Rapido stuff um, is the, um, Taking lens, uh, time to, to change the taking lens, which uh, takes uh, no, there's, a lot of time. This is so quick. I'm, I'm yeah. dying to get this printed and feature it in an episode um, as well. Just like start using it for myself. Yeah, and this is <laughs> and this is the thing. I um, I because uh, another reason why this is so big is not only because of the five E, which is a big ass scope, but still, or has a big ass rear at least. Um, I showed this earlier, this is uh, the same thing, mechanism for the Rapido clamps themselves. So, because I used the Rapido clamps before and I was very happy with the Rapido clamp, um, I made this attachment for the Rapido clamp actually, to attach it to them. Um, so you have the benefit of the Rapido clamp, but you can have this quick locking mechanism, so to say. It's and like a bionic. the reason, yeah, and, and the reason why I didn't do it anymore is at some point, you know, I at first I had uh, the the Rapido clamp connected to the FMJ. Uh, I didn't have the, the rear support. I only had the clamp 
uh, I had the front foot support and the the quick lock quick lock to the taking lens. So two mm -hmm. points of connection, stable connection works all right. Now though, I um, have a hardcore DNA, a rapid uh, the uh, Rectilux Deluxe. hardcore DNA. Yes, and the Rectilux hardcore DNA has a quite a deep thread. The thread on that one is like seven and a half, eight millimeters deep. The threads mm -hmm. on the FMJ, however, are only around five millimeters. So basically, the the FEDs have only also only this five millimeters deep threads. That means if I put the hardcore DNA on the FMJ, I get a distance it's gonna be of like around three millimeters. Yes, and this is quite a lot um, in front of your because the distance be between your uh, focuser and and of course, if you have an FED thirty five A, it doesn't matter as much. But if you have an hardcore DNA or the FED sixteen A, um, these three millimeters is quite a lot uh, for vignetting for wide lenses. So at that point, I decided that I don't want that, and uh, this is when I uh, just used the on the Kowa. I have the is it Kowa Kowa. I think Kowa? it's I say it Kowa, Japanese. but I don't know. Yeah, I never know. Um, on them, I have on that one. I have the HDN ring, which I'm a big fan of because it's so simple the design. And this ring mm -hmm. here is uh, more or less the same. I hope I can get it in a way, which is made by Rev Camera. This is the Sankor Type mm -hmm. 5E. And this is the, the same thing as the HDN. I actually had it, uh, I designed it myself and sent it to, to Raf from Raf Camera. And Raf is Ooh, maybe. Get it machined. Yeah, and Raf is maybe my favorite guy in this whole business because he's so easygoing, you know. Because Raf, when he sees, okay, this is something I can sell, then he gives you one for free, which is fair. Yes. And um, so I had this one made for free for me, and he also sold a few. I know a few people who bought them from him. And uh, this is then, this, this is also cool because um, I don't have it here now, the beauty ring of the 5E, the same actually as the Koa, which I have here. So uh -huh. this is the beauty ring of the Kowa. I don't know if we can see it properly. Here, the scope would sit. So you have this it's rim, space. which is also, yeah, there's space between them. So this is bad, of course. And we have the same when we have it in bad, the FMJ. Uh, on the Senkor 5E, it's like two millimeters. And this ring is only, I think, a half or 0.7 millimeters. Um, so we have even less distance, which is cool because the 5E can go really wide. And just with the front, and this was the point where, is, where I thought the FMJ isn't cutting it for me because it doesn't work properly with the Arco DNA. And this is when I made this mm -hmm. plan. And then at some point, yeah, the you know, to even it out yeah, in the middle. Yeah, and, then, and this is the thing, you know, you have always uh, this process because uh, I could have come up with this quick locking solution last year, probably. I could have done it already, but I didn't get the idea. And then I did the Rapido clamp stuff. And at some point, you know, when you only have the Rapido ring in the back, not even the support on it, only the ring, you kind of figure, why do I need this <laughs> ring? Because it doesn't hold anything. And it's, uh, I mean, I don't want to get, uh, get stuff away from Jim. You know, Jim from Rapido Technology is a nice guy who always helped me out quite a lot when I bought something from him. And I think for the niche we are in, the prices are really fair. It's not super cheap, but he, you know, I'd rather have one guy who makes stuff that is affordable and I can actually buy than not having anything at all. So, yep. uh, and he has to live from something. So, um, but for me, uh, I kind of figured I don't need the record ring in the rear. So I made this one uh, and it works. I know from Oli Kember. The whole Oli Kember is, Yes, it's, it's all printed. I mean, except for the, the, the front ring, but I, I, let me tell mm -hmm. you, I have this SEC here, and on the SEC, actually, I have a printed ring. Printed and ring. I don't, yeah, this is, um, actually, the HDN is compatible with this scope, so I can put the HDN on here, but I only have one HDN ring, so the reason, I want to get a second one, because the front threads, I rather have in metal, because threading mm -hmm. is always something that is better made for uh, metal, it's simply... 
uh, it's simply like it works, but it's you know, it better is made of metal. But except for that, you don't really um, need anything. Uh, we got a question here from Trevor Pinocchi. Pinocchi, please correct me. Uh, he's asking if you ever toyed with rehousing your own anamorphic adapter and pairing it with the taking lens to create a single unit. And um, that reminds me of your Yoshikarama. Do you have yes, that around? Uh, I have it, actually. <laughs> um, um, to, to answer the question fully, I never, I, I toyed with the idea, but I didn't do it so far. Um, I wanted to actually to make a proper single house anamorphic at some point. I don't know if plastic is, the, is a good thing for that, but that's something I need to figure out. Um, and actually, I got from uh, another guy from Berlin, Paul Vincent Roll. Uh, mm -hmm. He was here well, on the stream with us earlier, but yeah, now I, think I think so. he's gone. And Paul Vincent is a great guy. Paul Vincent is also a great guy. And he um, has uh, has given me um, one of these uh, big ass sky side scopes, the, the, the mm -hmm. 63. 663? 63 yes. 2X. I, I think so. And I wanted to disassemble it and to try to, to do something with it. But so far, I have some trouble to, uh, to open it up properly. And I actually hurt my hand quite bad. I, I injured myself a bit by trying to open oh. it. So I put it on the side for a bit. Yeah, by way, what gives. So, but yeah, the Yashika Rama. I call it Yashika Rama. It's actually, this is a Yashika scope. Let me, you can probably I love this. read it even. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's rather simple. It's um, actually, it's a, a Yashika scope is a very, very tiny uh, eight millimeter scope. And I bought five. this from... Yeah, it's 1.5. It's the real 1.5, though. I don't know how much yeah. I may talk about this on stream, but it's the real 1.5. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I bought this from France last year uh, during around Christmas. And I was super unhappy with it because the quality of it was a bit lackluster for my taste. Uh -huh. And uh, then, as you do, you know, you buy things, you're unhappy, you pump much more money into it. And I bought the... the oh, that's anamorphic in general. Yes, I think so. And uh, I bought this, uh, the Bell and Howl. The, I think it's only called Bell and Howl, or anamorphic for Bell and Howl, the, the single focus yeah, one. Yeah, 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 the long one. Yes, and uh, I disassembled the front adapter from it and built it into this, um, into this China helicoid. This is uh, an M85, M58. It's an M58 helicoid. 58 okay yeah and, uh, and uh, like what chris bold described on eshd like a couple of years back i also yeah, i think so in the channel yeah it's the same uh, glass and i, I think I it's the same about, helicoid um, yeah and uh, the thing is uh i tr i toyed with the idea to make another helicoid but building a helicoid or designing a helicoid that actually works is kind of a bitch so i <laughs> i thought this time i just used the ready-made available because uh, this is already too big in the end. And if you regrease these uh, helicoids, they are very, very smooth. Um, you have to regrease these because they are terrible. If not, I have a second one here, actually, which is not regreased. And this is, I need quite yeah. some force. I may not be able to. One thing that is terrible on these helicoids is they have this two chamber design, I will call it. So if you um, focus with it, it not only extends in the front, but also in the rear. So your focus oh, ring is in, is in the middle of it. So this problem is when you have gears that they screw themselves off of a follow focus because they move. Uh -huh. So this is why I made this uh, gears that uh, are longer than the actual helicoid. So it always has some point to grip onto. So, uh, but to, to talk about it, it's very, very basic actually. There's a scope, this is just in here. This is a plastic shell. And then I have, a t yeah, it's all just PLA. And then there's this ring. There's um, on the rear, we have um, uh, a stepper ring again. Uh, and then That's you can alignment. rotate it. Yeah, you can just align it, screw it tight with a, with a thumb screw. This is on 52, I think, millimeters I made this. Because uh, taking, uh -huh. I love this. I have this Nikkor H here. Uh, which is actually not my lens, not yet. Uh, this is from um, <laughs> Daniel, Daniel Audenried, uh, who's also a very terrific, terrific guy. Um, I don't know, but Daniel is 
it's a great guy and daniel uh hopefully wants to sell me this lens because i like it a lot and daniel has you know i had this i had this quest i, I think you know this quest uh, where i searched for the ultimate lens uh for myself so hmm. for uh and um i tried 50 millimeter lenses just to see what taking lens is to my liking the most. I was very hooked up on these Nikors. Uh, Pim, uh, I have no idea how to spell the last name. Uh, <laughs> Moshido, Moshido, I have no idea. Like, let's call him Tim. And Tim brought me to Nikkor lenses, and I liked them very, very much. And I bought the newer ones, the also AI, but uh, the newer AI lenses, and they had green coatings. And at some point, I realized that I hate green coatings in anything. Take and very long. I was very furious. Yeah, it, 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 it took a while. Then I, uh, I already bought a few lenses, and then I thought, no, this is bad. And the Nikkor H here that uh, Daniel also has, because Daniel has like a gazillion. I, I was searching for the perfect lens, and I asked Daniel if I can borrow the Nikkor H from him. And he gave me like 10 other lenses from Schneider, Zeiss, whatever, uh, you name it. Um, and I, I tested them all. And I just I get that gets hooked on the on actually my, my favorite so far is the Leica R's, obviously, because they are the most expensive oh, ones. Yeah. Obviously. But uh in a very close second it's the Nikkor H and it's a too beautiful lens to not own it. So I wanted to get it from him because I remember that Daniel doesn't like it. So I hopefully get it from him at some point. Yeah. Anyway, um yeah, actually this is all that there is to it to the scope. This is the cool thing because uh let me get the scope off here. If you just um, let me unscrew this ring as well. And if you get it on here, this is uh, light enough that I am comfortable with uh, with no support. Uh -huh. It's always easier when you don't do anything on stream to screw it tight. And um, it doesn't, you can still focus this lens quite easily. So it's mm -hmm. not uh, too heavy to, to block this. Uh, to block the helicoid, but as always, you focus it to infinity. The Yashica scope inside is uh, at infinity, and then you can just focus it on the front. Mm -hmm. The quality is okay. <laughs> it's it's uh, okay. It's uh, yeah. It's it's not. It. I mean, I have to be honest. It's not a very. The Yashica scope is not a very great lens in a classical sense. It has very very beautiful blue flares. Um, if you like that, mm -hmm. it's a. Cool 1.5, but it's an 80 millimeter scope. I mean, look at how tiny the rear element is. It's yep. very, very tiny. It's going to be so, very limiting. It's limiting. Uh, it goes wider than you would think, but it's um, very smudgy on the edges. So it's not a terrifically great I scope. See. I think Justin, that I mentioned earlier, Justin has the scope as well. And Justin likes it very much for a walk in the park. And I think for that, it's terrific oh, yeah. because it's, you can put it on very easily. It's, I mean, I now have an adapter 50 millimeter lens on here, but if I had native glass that I don't have, but if I had it, maybe even a pancake, mm -hmm. this would be a rather small setup to go around with. And I think uh, the best camera is the one that you take with you, you know, probably not for yeah. production, but for a walk in the park, it's a very, very great lens. And um, I actually wanted Absolutely. to pull off, uh, I wanted to pull off the same thing in two times. But um, it's hard to get a small enough two times lens. I think there are not many. There's the Animax, uh, the S8, and there's the um, the Canon S8. Is it called? I think. And then there's it's small. Yeah, and then there's some Kowa, and they are all freaking expensive. <laughs> so. Um, yeah. So and I already have so many scopes. I mean, at some point. You gotta ask yourself, like, like the Iskor Moffat. You know, the Iskor Moffat, I never thought about this lens. I, I saw that people use it before, but I was not very interested in it. And then last year, uh, we did this big lens comparison with Cinema Glass. I did it with Daniel Altenried and Paul Wilson-Broll. And I saw that That's on your channel. Yes, it's on my channel, actually. If you pop, 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 go to my, you know. Um, and uh, Daniel had the Iskor Moffat with him. And he was a huge fan. And I think Thomas, ah, names, right? Uh, Overtoom, it probably is in Dutch. Overtoom. Or in his tomb then, I have no idea. So Thomas, also a great lad. 
Eternals. And Thomas um, is also a very uh, keen on the Scrum Morphod. And I saw it then the first time in action. So I first time I actually, um, maybe I would change it back for now. Uh, the first time I was really keen on it or seeing it, and uh, I loved it. You know, the flares are very nice. It's a nice purple. Um, it's quite sharp. It's not very wide. This is maybe the only thing it doesn't have going for it, but uh, the, the bokeh is just the, the best I've seen so far from any uh, 2x scope, uh, from any projecting scope for that matter. Yeah. Also a great thing. Uh, this is why I didn't sell it yet. I bought it last year from Tim Linson. <laughs> I like it. It actually, this is something I can uh, can say. I also have like an HTN-like ring for this scope for the Escomorphot. I designed this and had Raph make one, and this works incredibly bad. So uh, yeah, the thing is that the Escomorphot has very, very uh, the, the usual. You know this. The usual uh, threats we have on these things is uh has a pitch of 0.75 millimeters yeah. the iscomorpho however has a pitch of around 0.5 millimeters so much okay. much thinner it's the same pitch as an m3 screw so very very tiny and making a ring for it doesn't really work mm. so i think i probably couldn't remove this ring anymore if i wanted to so this is a one of a kind life. so it's the only ring it, it's the only i mean uh it I have to admit, it isn't too bad because uh, in the end, it uh, it um, raises the value of the scope because you can uh, connect the single focus solution much closer to it than usual with any uh, or with the original ring. But um, yeah, now kind of, and it's uh, yeah. What can you do? Um, sometimes you fail with the things you invent. <laughs> And uh, like, so this is a like one of a kind. Of of the yeah, I think I think it's a um, so far. Yeah, in the end, but it I, doesn't even matter. Yeah, but but I think this is an important thing to to notice. You know, I, when I bought the SEC, for example, I bought this quite cheap for around two hundred fifty or two hundred eighty euros, something around something something like that, which is for a Kova lens is quite cheap for a basically Kova beam H. Yeah, uh, for it. But uh, I received it, and the I'll seller said, the prices yeah, go up. Yeah, definitely. And then I think I sold a lens similar to this one. We had some separation for more, which uh, the separation wasn't too bad. But you know, uh, they are worth quite a bit. The thing is, I bought this, and the seller said it's great condition, and it came here, and it was not in great condition. It was terrifically bad. It has because this scope has um, a locking screw. And the guy who owned this lens before loved this locking screw. So he locked it so tight that he, uh, because underneath the locking screw is the helicoid, and the co complete helicoid is completely wasted. And the glass had flaked on them in internally, um, and it was, it was furious. And I contacted eBay, I paid for, uh, with bank transfer, and the guy never responded. And eBay said basically, yeah, the only thing we can do is we can you provide with information and you can go to the police or get a uh, lawyer. And I was like, yeah, for 200 or like, let's say $300, get a lawyer is a bit ridiculous. You know, the lawyer is, <laughs> is much more expensive than that. So um, I just bit the bullet. And then I uh, tried to repair it. You know, the cool thing is uh, with an amorphic, at least when you don't do double focus, uh, you can't give a damn about the, the broken helicoid because you only need the lens at an infinity. And um, then the, the lenses, uh, the, the screws on the lens were obviously glued, as they always are if you need it. And then I uh, actually, I saw, I used a saw then, the Dremel, and saw the screws uh, so you can uh, pry them open with a very bigger screwdriver. And then I cleaned it and reassembled it. And now it's a very nice lens. It's one of my favorite lenses, actually. And I think this is a very important, very important thing to notice that uh, you pay three hundred dollars for something, you know, and it's essentially probably wasted money because with all these scopes, I think the Iskra Ultra Star, the Iskra Ultra Star, uh, is around as old as me. So I think we yeah. have the same birth year or something. Yeah, I, I I learned this today from from Nick Skinner, who's also a very Jeez. Nick Skinner is the kind of guy who 
who who says anything about lenses and you understand the word lens, you know? So that's where it stops. So it's great. I love this. You know, when when uh, you understand so little about something or you only learn about some someone like him, how little you understand about this. Same with Justin. And or um, Justin has from, joined from us in the there. chat just now. Ah, nice. And the thing is that uh, that Bildrosa is, is one of the modern lenses, you know? It's a very modern lens, and it's still over 30 years old. And the Kowas and the, the Senkor Compact or whatever are much older than that. Or maybe even if they are only 30 years old, it's quite some age for a lens. So you can always be prepared that the lens is a waste of money if you can't tell for sure, which is cool. Uh, to buy from people you can trust, like uh, JSD from Japan, who also sells quite a few lenses. Uh, because when I buy something from JSD, I can be assured that the thing I buy is good, you know? Yep. It's not wasted money. And then it's yeah. fair, I think, to to pay a bit more uh, than maybe... A, I mean, I can repair a Kowa now. I didn't know I could do it before, but now I know because I did it, because I had to, because else it would be wasted money. And, uh, when you think you wasted the money, then it's not too bad to open it up and just repair it yourself because it's either wasted or you can repair it. And uh, then it's fair money, I think. And it's a good scope for a cheap price. It's, it, it's the experience of repairing it. I'm just catching up here on the chat. We got people already going for the Fujinon wide angle adapters. There's a hunt going on. Um, we got <laughs> someone from Russia who doesn't quite understand what we're saying, but it's a, they're saying it's a cool thing to watch. So thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, Justin just joined us, and uh, Tyson was asking how much like do you, we expect to lose in terms of transmission with scope plus single focus? By the way, um, so the idea is. imply any loss of light and the same goes for the wide angle adapters you're going to lose light if the rear glass of your scope is smaller than the front of your taking lens basically uh, you can check my calculator on the blog the anamorphic calculator has a tab or a section for it like a mechanical aperture and that's what you're going to be looking into so the yashica is going to impose some light loss that you're going to you're going to say I'm not losing any light but you are. So, <laughs> uh just trust. And yeah. uh, I think actually we are running a bit long here so we kind of got to wrap this one up and continue on a next time. Uh, I think we got a lot of information we showed a lot of stuff that you're making I'm yeah, I made a mess looking to here. feature <laughs> looking to feature the quick release clamps and the focus on the channel pretty soon. Uh, I'm I'm I have a friend who's printing them. My printer has gone belly up, so dead. <laughs> uh, but I got a friend printing it, and he's super like, "What is this stuff they were asking me to print? This looks so complicated." So it's gonna be fun. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And um, yeah, it was it's it was a really inspiring conversation. I think next time we gotta narrow our focus if we can do lens puns in this lens conversation. <laughs> yeah, um, kind of went everywhere, which is I think the idea. This is the first month of trying to live stream on this channel, and it's been real fun. So if you got any last minute questions, uh, shoot them in the chat now. Uh, Lucas, I realized I never asked what you do for a living. You said you ah, have yes. a steady job that yes, keeps um, you uh, afloat. So what do you actually, do? I'm assuming it's film. Yes, I, I do. I um, the, the, uh, the thing is, um, I, uh, I'm i not secretive about my day job, but I don't like to talk about it that much. I do. Uh, usually, I don't like to talk about it much online. Uh, simply because I saw a lot of stuff going on. I had I was admin on a just a little banter here uh, on a Facebook group for a long time, a very big Facebook group. And there, there was some point where people were unhappy with what other people uh, said, and then they called or dropped an email to their boss, like, hey, your guy is talking smack online. How do you think about that? You know, and 
my boss is very chill with this kind of stuff, but it's it's a scenario that is so unsettlingly um yeah it's it's a it's a very terrific talk so i yeah. i just didn't no i do um i am I'm assuming fully employed. you work with with projects that are under ndas and things yes, that you I, are not I mean, allowed to I, talk I, about I, most of the I, time i can actually i can talk about anything that is already released i work in a film production company um we do mainly commercials but we also have a little uh so to say, department for feature films. We did our first feature film, um, as a, our first uh, completely self-produced feature film was uh, aired on Berlinale this year, actually. Nice. Uh, yeah, and we we didn't want something, but we got the honorable mention, which is also something at the Berlinale. Uh, which was, it was a new category. It was Encounters, I think. And it was like for, for uh, more indie. It's a very independent kind of film. Um, not really independent, but you get the idea. So it's, uh, yeah, we mainly do commercials. Yeah. And I work uh, for, uh, we do commercials for companies like Mercedes. But also uh, Ferrero, I think, is very well known. These are the guys that do Nutella. Uh, <laughs> Um, we did stuff for Adidas for the European Championship, Coca-Cola, whatever. Um, so if you drive a car, there's a chance I did commercials for yours, uh, uh, for, or at least for the, the manufacturer. <laughs> um, yeah, and I personally, I, yes. I work in post-production. I do the, I know only, I was hired as a VFX artist, but I also uh, do general online stuff now. So conforming for the grading, after the grading, that kind of stuff, finishing. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually, which is a fun th thing, we, uh, when we have a film and we need a voiceover and we don't have it yet, yet recorded or there's no deciding on the, the, the voiceover artist, uh, then I usually uh, do the voiceovers in company <laughs> for, for the temp track, which is always kind of funny because at like one it. time i can't say this i think uh, i think i'm allowed to say this i uh, we did was something for the lufthansa the, the uh, company with the company yeah with the yeah, company yes and and we, they, they made it like an april fool's joke and um because we did a thing with uh, like extreme german kind of stuff you know because the lufthansa only is super german and then there's like a like bavarian pop or something uh, the, 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 and then they made a joke about it. And uh, <laughs> then they actually used my voice track because it was quite a lot cheaper than the original guy who usually does the voice tracks for Lufthansa. It was uh, only showed like they for two paid days you for that. I, I, I was paid. Uh, I, only, nice. I only got paid the, the buyouts for one year or something, which is quite a lot, actually. And uh, so I'm actually a professional voiceover artist as well in that regard. He's playing that credit, bingo. Yeah. Hey, yes. well, um, I, I actually I should to... put that in my Tinder profile, probably. So, yeah, uh, or at least IMDb, but Tinder could be very popular. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it's good that uh, I guess we're both kind of in post production, so that's uh, an aspect of anamorphic shooting that I want to cover more. Uh, so, we're probably going to be talking again soon. Uh, for everybody watching, if you haven't hit the <laughs> like button, I know there's some of you that haven't that now, and if you haven't subscribed, there's a lot more anamorphic. Uh, coming up on this channel soon. Uh, I'm there's uh, someone asking about the Siri 35 mil. I'm streaming with it right now. This is the 35 mil. So if you like this, you're oh, looks great. You're gonna like the review. <laughs> and it was great talking to you, Lucas. This was a very enlightening and inspiring conversation. And uh, if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed to Lucas's channel yet, you definitely should. I'm pasting a link on the chat and there's going to be one in the description as well. Yeah. Lucas, if you want to shoot something now. Yes, when I get over 10,000 subscribers, I can get into the YouTube studios. I don't want to shoot anything in the YouTube studios, but I want to be able to get there just for the heck of it. So if you can help me achieve that, that would be ace at 8.3 so we need yes. a few people <laughs> and, <Yeah>. and <laughs> Tito, thank you so much for having me it was a lot of fun uh, actually time flied i didn't realize it's already one and a half hours it was uh yep it was a lot it was a lot so yeah. uh, i even drank all my water i think it's
<laughs> pretty late over there. So yeah, we'll go to bed soon, and yeah. good luck with work. <laughs> I'm going to get started on my day here. <laughs> yes. All right. I guess that's it. Thanks, everyone, yeah. for being here. And uh, we'll see you on Sunday for something. And next Wednesday, for sure, on the next live stream. Subject to be defined. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep them guessing. It's always good. <laughs>